My sermon passage is Luke chapter 6, verses 17 to 26. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came forth from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. <clears throat> this passage is part of what Luke calls the Sermon on the Plain, or a level place, as it says, and I just couldn't resist the pun in my sermon title, Jesus on the Level. Not the Sermon on the Mount, which is what Matthew calls it, but the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus on the Level, on the Level Plain, and on the Level Honest, Genuine, Sincere, Straightforward, Legit, on the Level. These verses in Luke and the comparable ones in Matthew are also called Beatitudes, which I'm sure you know. I'm pretty sure y'all know many, if not most, of the verses themselves. Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Those are some of the most familiar words in the Bible. And those ideas escaped the confines of the church a long time ago. That's probably because Beatitudes weren't the sole property of the church or even Jesus in the first place. Did you know there are other Beatitudes in the Bible? There are 25 in the Psalms, starting with the first one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does, he prospers. Amen. Toward the end of the Psalms is another beatitude in 146. Happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Amen. There's a beatitude in Proverbs 3, verses 13 and 14. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gets understanding. For the gain from it is better than gain from silver, and its profit better than gold. Amen. There's one back in Deuteronomy 33, 29. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord the shield of your help, and the sword of your triumph. And there are 44 Beatitudes total in the New Testament, not just the familiar ones in Luke's Sermon on the Plain and in Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Romans, James, and 1 Peter are all blessed, if you will, with Beatitudes. But today we're considering Luke's, and we have to give a little attention to Matthew's too because they're a little different. In short, some people think Luke is more social justice oriented because, among other things, Luke has Jesus saying, blessed are the poor. And Matthew has Jesus saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Not the poor, but the poor in spirit. Matthew is thought to have spiritualized what Jesus was getting at. Luke's audience was mostly Jews, they say, and Matthew's was mostly Gentile. 
and Gentiles not knowing the Hebrew scriptures or much else about the Jewish religion, Matthew had to fill in the spiritual stuff between the lines. So some say, we're blessed either way. As familiar as these words in Luke may be, I want us to hear them in several different ways. I did this once with Matthew's Sermon on the Mount for the same reason. Familiarity with scripture doesn't breed contempt, but it can lead to a kind of dullness of thought from sheer repetition. Profound truths can lose their impact. The Beatitudes are the heart of what we have of Jesus' teachings. It starts with them, with the Beatitudes, words so familiar that most of the world knows them with or without the church. So I want us to hear them, these blessings and the woes, in some unfamiliar ways to revive them. <clears throat> because as Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So let us open our hearts and minds. As Pastor John Robinson said in his famous farewell to the pilgrims as they took sail from England in 1620, the Lord hath more light and truth yet to break forth from his holy word. Or as some of us put it, God is still speaking. Let's listen. The Message Bible. You're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You're blessed when you're ravenously hungry. Then you're ready for the messianic meal. You're blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes with the morning. Count yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws you out. Every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and that that person is uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Skip like a lamb if you like. For even though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you're in good company. My preachers and witnesses have always been treated like this. But it's trouble ahead if you think you have it made. What you have is all you'll ever get. And it's trouble ahead if you're satisfied with yourself. Yourself will not satisfy you for long. And it's trouble ahead if you think life's all fun and games. There is suffering to be met, and you're going to meet it. There's trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. Amen. Hear these words from the New Living Bible. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. <clears throat> what blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. What sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have your only happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. Hear these words from the Amplified Bible and this is an example of why different translations and paraphrases are important to notice. The Amplified Bible takes a cue from Matthew's blessed are the poor in spirit and spiritualizes Luke's blessed are the poor period. And looking toward his disciples, he began speaking, blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired, so far so good, blessed are you who are poor. But then it adds in spirit. Those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant, for the kingdom of God is yours, both now and forever. 
blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are you who hunger now. Here we go again. You who hunger now for righteousness, actively seeking right standing with God, for you will be completely satisfied. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are you who weep now over your sins and repent. For you will laugh when the burden of sin is listed, uh, rather is lifted. Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritually alive with life joy in God's goodness are you when people hate you and exclude you from their fellowship and insult you and scorn your name as evil because of your association with the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible. For their fathers used to treat the prophets in the same way. Did you notice how the Amplified Bible translators went to preaching? There's nothing wrong with that, if you notice. And it goes on. But woe, judgment is coming to you who are rich and place your faith in possessions while remaining spiritually impoverished. For you are already receiving your comfort in full, and there is nothing left to be awarded to you. Woe to you who are well fed, gorged, satiated now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, enjoying a life of self-indulgence, for you will mourn and weep and deeply long for God. Woe to you when all the people speak well of you and praise you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. In a footnote, the Amplified Bible even goes so far as to say the four woes, quote, are addressed to those who lack spiritual perception and are oblivious to the importance of Jesus' message of salvation, end quote. Well, to me, it looks more like he was talking to and about literal, laughing, rich, selfish, well-fed people. But again, we're blessed by this message either way, because truth is in Jesus' sermon, social justice truth and spiritual living truth both. Finally, let's hear these words from the King James Version. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. By the way, that's another difference between Luke's Sermon on the Plain and Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Matthew has Jesus speaking mostly in the third person. Blessed are the poor in spirit, as if he were talking about them. Luke has Jesus speaking in the second person. Blessed are you poor. Like he's talking to him. Luke's Jesus goes on. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So here's the question. Who is Jesus talking to here? And who is he talking about? Some scholars think he was talking to the twelve disciples and others who were following him, mainly those he had healed or were seeking his healing touch. But he was deliberately doing it within earshot of the great multitude of people from all over. Well, I think Jesus was talking to and about them all. Earlier in Luke, Jesus told the people and us what he was up to. It's Luke 4, 16 to 19. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue, as his custom was, on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That sounds like just about everyone who would have been around him that day on the plain, the poor, which was almost literally everybody, the captives, 
which was all Jews, their nation occupied by the Roman Empire, and anyone else who was in debt as a debt slave. The blind, which was literal, but there's also spiritual blindness, so I'll cut Matthew some slack. And the oppressed, which again was about everybody present, both politically and militarily, as well as spiritually, if they were complacent about God and the ways of God, the ways of love and justice, or if they were arrogant spiritually. I think everybody's covered in Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, both the poor and hungry, who know they're totally dependent on God and God's people acting on his behalf. Therefore, they trust God and trust God's care and mercy. And the rich, who can afford to comfort themselves, and so they find it hard to trust God and God's love, grace, and mercy, because they think they don't need it. Everybody's covered in this preaching by Jesus on a level place, this Sermon on the Plain. You know, some people fret because there's a Sermon on the Mount and a Sermon on the Plain. They see it as a possible biblical inconsistency. Well, I don't. Jesus had to have said things over and over like any teacher, and he had to have, had, and he had to have said these things over time. Matthew put Jesus on a mountain, and Luke put him on the plain. Someone pointed out that in Luke, Jesus, on a level place, is on the same level as the disciples and the crowd, not on a mountain above them. I like that. Sometimes, in distress, I do need to be able to look up in my mind and my heart to Jesus Christ Almighty up there. But most times, you know, these are hard teachings. Most times, I need reminded that what a friend we have in Jesus doesn't preach down to us. Doesn't that make you smile? Makes me smile. Jesus is close down here with me, with us, walking with us, still speaking, still preaching and teaching us, blessing the poor who have nothing but God, and blessing even the rich with warnings to turn to God. Still. Jesus is still loving us, still saving us, still on the level, on our level. Amen.